So a massive travel day, uh, and it's a one-sided travel day at that. This is the opposite of, of Black Friday when we go over on Thanksgiving weekend and we do our shopping. This is the opposite of trying to take advantage uh, of that. Or Americans coming our way to Boxing Day, the, the Americans that know what that is. We want to bring on Victoria Walker, who's the senior travel reporter for thepointsguy.com. She's done a lot of writing on uh, travel and coronavirus. They haven't always uh, mixed and matched over the last 17 months, that's for sure. And uh, she experienced uh, the land border reopening today. Victoria, it's great to have you on here in Toronto. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's superb to have you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you, uh, <laughs> this was not the easiest assignment. Uh, and yet at the same time, you must have been, uh, were you a bit fascinated by the decision making process? You're doing this quote unquote for work, but the decision making process for a lot of Americans to say, now's my time. It's open now. Not waiting till next week, not waiting till September. I'm going today. It's actually not that surprising. I mean, you have to think about it. For some people, you know, I'm going for work, but you have a lot of people who are crossing the border for very important reasons, seeing family, seeing friends, handling business. Um, and for some people, yeah, that type of travel cannot wait. And we also have to keep in mind as the Delta's variant spreads around um, the world, you don't really know what the travel policies can look like tomorrow or next week and so the you know the the crush to get pat you know, get through the border is not that much of a surprise um you know for uh, travelers coming from the u.s into canada it actually doesn't really surprise me at all i think you make a great point that um i'm sure it's been in the recesses in the back of my mind but I think we've all just been waiting. You can imagine us on the other side. We want to, I lived in Michigan for 10 years. I want to go there. I've got relatives in Ohio. I want to go there. I want to come to New York state. I miss New York city like crazy. I do. Um, and we're, we're itching to get there, but you just made the point that, Hey, maybe, you know, maybe this is not, you know, this is not forever because let's face it. We've all gone back and eaten inside and then told you can't do it. Gyms we're back in. Then we get kicked out again. Schools back in and can't, so you're right. There's there's no you know, I, I think we felt this would be a triumphant moment where we think, OK, the border is open. But what if it has to close again? We don't you know, our, our brains can't process that. We've been waiting so long. Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know, that's something that travelers are really going to have to keep in mind, especially as uh, some travel restrictions uh, uh, become relaxed. And really, it, 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 it would not surprise me, you know. I know a lot of Canadians are really interested in, you know, crossing the border uh, to come into the U.S., but it wouldn't surprise me if the U.S. decides to extend that closure mm -hmm. um, for the, you know, foreseeable future, especially as the Delta variant spreads. We don't know that to be certain, uh, but it wasn't would not surprise me. You know, the you know, the U.S. has kept the border closed uh, for non-essential travel purposes, both on the northern and southern border since the start of the coronavirus. And um, to your point, as it seemed like we were kind of turning a, a new page in the pandemic, um, and now we have the Delta variant and, you know, other variants of concern. Um, and so it, it really wouldn't surprise me. Um, and so that's why, you know, I'm seeing these you know, travelers who are saying, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, across the border to uh, Canada, I would like to see family, I would like to see friends, I would like to handle business. Um, because, you know, we don't really know what the future may bring. Yeah, I think that's interesting, because I think people have pointed out and, and the harshest critics of saying, uh, why do it now? We, many of us were fully vaccinated as of very early in the summer, if not the late spring. Certainly in the United States, um, I've got uh, my sister's family lives near Rochester, New York, and they and their two boys were all fully vaccinated. Um, they're 12 plus. Um, they were fully vaccinated probably by uh, early May. So they've been ready to go um, for some time. And if anything, I think, Victoria, we thought, well, we're Canadian. We're more locked up. We're more restrictive. We'll be the more, um, if you will, uptight about it. And Americans have a more laissez faire attitude about uh, COVID-19. Um, and so there, we, we even thought, I think the American border might open to us before the other way around. Well, a lot of people in the travel industry have pushed uh, the Biden administration to reverse um, this ban, which it actually dates back from the Trump administration. Um, they've praised um, 
other governments, including Canada, including the EU for reopening um, their borders to vaccinated Americans, but they've also pushed the US government to relax those restrictions. Um, so far, it's really you know business as usual. We haven't seen any sort of um, real indication about reopening um, you know that you know that land border, but there have been uh, talks, and I've seen reports that you know it could happen sooner rather than later. But especially you know with the Delta variant again, that's something that has you know kind of kind of upend <laughs> travel, if if you will. Especially as we were turning this kind of, it seemed that we were turning this kind of uh, new page in you know the pandemic, and especially as it relates to travel. Um, but yeah, no, it's it, it, it's definitely you know been a very you know weird time to tra to travel. Um, probably we easily easily one of the you know weirdest uh, times I've I, I've personally traveled in my entire life. It's tough to say, Victoria Walker, by the way, joining a senior travel reporter for the PointsGuide.com. It's tough to say when it will calm down because we don't know what. Um, a readjusted normal is I've, I've said it on a million shows there's not you know there's not going to be some great day when all the world leaders walk out together hand in hand and, and say the pandemic is over this is a gradual slide uh, or climb if you will towards normalcy but as we, as you know and, and as I know and you probably see it from people very eager to travel and people not at all eager to travel that um, that will all you know, we're all going to approach this differently. We're all going to have different levels of aggressiveness and, and to be honest, different levels of fear about what the new normal is. Absolutely. Um, and that's I, I think that's in, in, in my reporting on the pandemic. One thing that I have noticed is that the travel industry would is trying to get governments and, you know, uh, governments and other travel partners to kind of adopt a kind of universal standard, you know, whether that be vaccination, whether it be in, you know, testing requirements to really get, you know, travel moving again to get people comfortable, people who are going to travel comfortable traveling again. Um, like I said, you know, I think the, the biggest very the biggest, you know, variable is the Delta variant and, you know, what that will look like for travel. Um, one thing I've kind of cautioned in my reporting about the pandemic and traveling is that COVID itself has proven to be, you know, unstable. It's proven to be something that, you know, we really can't predict. And so, you know, I'm saying this and next week, everything could change tomorrow. Everything can change. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one of those things that you have to constantly monitor and, uh, really be flexible in your travel plans. Like even myself planning this trip to cross the border, I had to be very flexible in my travel plans. I was planning on flying out um, on um, Sunday evening and ended up having to come in Monday morning or well, Monday afternoon. And so, you know, that's really the nature of having to travel during the pandemic in that like you're used mm -hmm. to being able to go, go, go. And now you have to slow down and, uh, you know, really kind of plan your travel ahead of time. United made a big statement on Monday. As you can imagine, vaccine passports are getting considerably debate, debated here, here in Ontario and, and really most of Canada, but mostly in Ontario. We're very heavily vaccinated. Um, New York State's got great numbers as well, I should point out to the audience. Um, but most of us seem pretty eager um, to utilize those passports. United Airlines on Monday came out and seemed to get a, a, a considerable round of applause from, from travelers and their customers saying that we're asking all our employees to make sure they're vaccinated or, or they're not working. And of course, it's more heavily debated about healthcare um, in the healthcare industry, in schools this fall, clearly with unvaccinated kids. Um, do other countries, do, do you think other companies follow suit? It, it doesn't strike me that a company standing alone at the end, um, when these dominoes, these potential vaccine passport dominoes fall is, is going to be seen as, uh, as, as, as a company that's going to, you know, not regret their decision. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, United taking this, you know, kind of big step to require, um, 
uh, employees to be vaccinated. It wouldn't surprise me if other travel companies, other large companies follow suit, because to your point, as one domino falls, the rest will fall. And as one company, you know, makes a big announcement like that, other companies will follow suit. And so that's going to be something to monitor in the next couple of weeks in terms of like other travel, um, other travel companies, organizations really following suit in the U.S. Um, we've seen that with obviously United, but we've also seen that in the more of the pri the public sector in, you know, New York City requiring, um, uh, New York City requiring, um, you know, it's um, city workers to be vaccinated or right. faith, uh, kind of, kind of enhanced testing requirements. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's really going to be a thing. Uh, New York City's mayor saying, you know, you have to be vaccinated in order to eat indoors is really pushing that as an incentive to get vaccinated in order to take advantage of really what all of New York City has to offer, according to what, you know, the mayor has said. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me if other, you know, large companies, you know, cities end up following suit. That's where I wanted to go to uh, to end things off was you are a New Yorker. Um, you know, we're Toronto's biggest city in uh, in Canada, New York, um, a massive city, a tourist destination. So I don't doubt they've been just just throttled by a lack of tourism and a lack of international visitors. Um, but, you know, do you feel it's it's got the potential as it often does? Right. So we're 20 year anniversary of 9-11. And though this is something very different economically, um, New Yorkers are resilient. New York businesses um, are resilient. And it's it's part of the reputation of being in New York City, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, it, if there's one thing that New Yorkers do, it is adapt. And so this is just, you know, one thing that's New Yorkers are going to have or ad having to adapt to. Um, most New Yorkers want to get back to the things that make New York great, like events, food, mm -hmm. culture, music. And so, you know, this is just one thing to kind of get back to what makes New York City, New York City. Um, obviously, you know, not everybody is on board with it, um, but, you know, that's just kind of the, you know, it's just kind of the, the, how things are. Um, but, you know, the vast majority of New Yorkers I've talked to, the vast majority of, you know, people who work in the tourism space, who work in the, in the, um, you know, restaurant industry are kind of, if not pushing for this mandate, um, mm -hmm. very happy and, you know, really eager to see this mandate go into place because they want business. Yeah. And, and when borders reopen, to be honest, if you had to pick one, you know, help, it helps businesses on one shoulder, hurts them on the other. I don't know how it's going to hurt them. I don't know how it's going to hurt tourism eventually. And people saying, I know we'll be safe there because of this and that. And the other thing, they, of course, they will be if they're fully vaccinated. They want to be among other fully vaccinated people. That's just obvious. Yeah, that's what it's it's, it's definitely seeming like um, a lot of uh, people I've spoken to who have traveled uh, to New York City or people who have been in New York City during the pandemic have indicated that they have wanted to be in spaces that have been, you know, that with people who are also fully vaccinated. And you'll see that people are more, people who are fully vaccinated gravitating towards those spaces and those events because they want to, they want to be around people that they feel have a lower risk of, you know, contracting the coronavirus. Makes perfect sense. Uh, I'm glad your journey went well today. Thanks for uh, updating us on both the Rainbow Bridge uh, and where it was at and uh, and people's eagerness to get over and get to Canada and uh, where things are in, uh, in NYC. It was great having you on the show. Thank you for having me.